Welcome to Astra Podcast Bonus, an extra episode in between regular episodes in which we'll relax and let loose our imagination. Let loose our imagination. This is bonus episode number 6.1. In the last episode, we talked about reality, and we were just scratching the surface. But we're just aiming to understand it in a general sense. But it's still not an easy task, especially when we have very strong paradigms interfering with this process of understanding. In the last episode, we mentioned the idea that we live in a computer simulation of some kind. Let's compare for a second our reality with a reality created in a computer. If you look at the building blocks of a computer, I'm speaking mainly about the software, it is fundamentally just zeros and ones. That's the information. And that's how they work even today. So a large stream of zeros and ones can build very complicated data structures or even virtual realities. These zeros and ones translate to small electric signals going through intricate circuits. It starts to resemble a nervous system of a biological entity. Zero will represent no electricity present, and one will represent some current moving in the system. It is extremely simple, but if you know how to work with data, using these two states of zero and one, or off and on, you can build very complicated data structures. Now, if we look at the smallest particle of an atom, we can see that it is composed of electrons, neutrons, and protons. But these last two are also composed of quarks and other very small elemental particles. And that's as far as we can measure or see for now. The debate is that these particles are not actually particles of matter, but some kind of energy vibration. And according to the frequency of that vibration, it will create a specific type of quote-unquote particle. Just like a musical instrument producing different sounds from very different vibrations. That theory is called string theory. The important part here is that if everything is made out of vibrating energy, that means that matter is actually not what we think it is. Just like a computer code can build the rules and behaviors of a virtual world, intelligent energy builds our world. In my own opinion, I'm still not sure if this reality is generated by a computer or something else. And as I said in the last episode, it is something interesting to know and understand, but it doesn't really matter, because we are still existing. I'm a believer that the nature of existence is infinite, so if for any reason this reality fails, to me it doesn't really mean that all the evidence of this simulation will die or cease to exist, because energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change. And change is the only constant of this universe. That argument can be open to discussion, with the idea that your consciousness could be uploaded to a cloud in the future. What could happen if the servers where your consciousness lives is switched off? From the point of view of the person who is living in the server, I suppose it will be similar to what someone will experience if suddenly dies without realizing it. But of course they will continue on just like NDE and reincarnation cases suggest. And from the point of view of people who is quote-unquote alive, the people from the server will simply disappear or die. The true argument is, can you save the data of someone's consciousness in a hard drive and then recover it whenever you want? I think it is possible, but there is a component we're not aware of yet to be able to do that. And I also think that even if a perfect digital copy of someone's avatar, including brain configuration and all that's necessary, is preserved, it requires the actual consciousness as a driver to inhabit the copy or the avatar. Whether it's the original consciousness or another, but it requires self-awareness. Otherwise, it'll be some kind of NPC on a video game. Several movies and TV series have made references to this kind of thing. Some of them are the movie The Matrix, Free Guy, and the TV series Upload, some episodes in Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams, and Black Mirror, just to name a few. God is a mathematical equation. 
As a result of some research being done at Los Alamos National Laboratory by John von Neumann, a British mathematician called John Horton Conway in 1970 created a game called The Game of Life. This was not a fancy multiplayer game, in fact, it was a zero-player game, which means that it relies on its initial state and once you press play, it will evolve by itself following few simple rules. This game is simply a giant grid, and each square can be filled with cells, which symbolize a live cell. For a cell to be spawned, to survive, or to die, there are a set of very simple rules that will determine that. This was done to visualize or simulate the characteristics and evolution of self-replicating robots, some of the problems scientists have been solving to be able to send self-sufficient robots to other planets. The game became very popular among the scientific community. The interactions between these cells can generate very intricate patterns and it can evolve into very interesting ways, and it's still popular today to the point that there have been resulting shapes and patterns from these interactions that have been catalogued and named. And just recently, in 2020, a new structure never seen before was discovered. This game is so simple, and yet, some people have dared to create amazing complicated things in it, from a digital clock display to a functional computer, and even the game itself inside the game, only revealing it when you zoom all the way out. Just Google Conway's Game of Life if you want to know more. The reason I'm mentioning this interesting game or simulator is because of the way it is so simple in its rules and yet able to create amazing patterns that seem to have a life of their own. There are many other variations of this kind of simulation. There is one called The Life Engine, which you can visit and use online at thelifeengine.net which is very similar to the game of life, but creates a simulation of organisms that reproduce, compete, and evolve. There is also one created by a YouTuber called Brain XYZ, in which the interaction between particles create amazing and complicated geometric patterns that seems to self-organize and create different kinds of life forms. Many others have created similar programs that run particles or cell simulations, I found these simulations extremely interesting because it's like creating artificial life. These are not just games, and actually, they can be quite boring for today's video game standards. But they're very interesting tools to visualize mathematics in action. Creating these simulations, we can have a better understanding of how life can evolve and interact in a defined system by just applying some simple rules. And here is an interesting idea. If I could do a simulation of myself in different situations, just to see what would happen, it would be really interesting. I could learn a thing or two from that. But in order for the simulation to be completely accurate, my simulated me would have to think he's the real one, so that he can think and be exactly how I am. This is when it gets tricky. This would be a very powerful tool, and in the hands of the wrong people, it is really bad. Now you can begin to understand what the movie The Matrix was trying to tell us. With the help of computers, simulations are a useful tool for many aspects of science and understanding. Just like the game of life can give us a different point of view on the creation, evolution, and behavior of cells acting on simple rules, there are many other types of applications for simulations from which we can benefit. Another interesting use for computers in this branch of ideas is the visualization of mathematical equations, like the Julia set and the Mandelbrot set. Now, this is a subject I don't understand fully, but certainly visualizing the results of these mathematical equations help us understand better some correlations with other areas of science. If you have heard of fractals before, this is exactly what the Julia set and most popularly the Mandelbrot set produce. There is a video on the YouTube channel Numberfile that shows how it works. The video is called What's so special about the Mandelbrot set? You can see it from the link in the show notes. If you have seen a fractal before, you'll be mesmerized at how complex that visualization is. And it is literally infinite. If you haven't seen one, just look on YouTube and you'll see a lot of videos of this fractal zooming in infinitely. And how exactly is that useful? Well, to understand the fundamentals of reality and patterns, it is very useful. Of course, you need the knowledge to do that. But apart from that, it produces beautiful shapes and colors. And that's enough for my level of understanding. 
Some say that the Mandelbrot set is a picture of God. And I like that, because it proves that God is not a man sitting on the clouds. Of course, it is a way of saying that we are all one or part of this massive fractal. And it's a very beautiful way of seeing this mathematical representation. And once again, the equation responsible for the Mandelbrot set is simple. Even I can understand it, considering that I am very bad at math. The equation is z equals z squared plus c, which has to be iterated. It seems that very simple formulas are the ones underlying our universe. Not very complicated nonsense. Just like Einstein's equation, e equals mc squared. Or our binary system of zeros and ones, which is not an equation, but a data structure. Still, a very simple thing that produces very complicated patterns. Thank you for joining me in today's bonus episode. My name is Joival and I'm the messenger. I hope you enjoyed this episode and remember that if you want to interact with us and the community, you can visit astrapodcast.com where you'll find the link to our Discord server. Also, check out our YouTube channel under the name Beyond Possibilities where you'll find this podcast and also more video content. Thank you for listening and thank you for existing.